Uh, we're now going to look at this example 39, which is one of these Pythagorean identities in um, cot and cosec, and also um, sec as well. So, as it says in the notes, they're called Pythagorean identities because they are of the form of a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And we can see that this is the case here because one is obviously one squared, so that could be like the a. The B is cot squared and C is cosec. So cosec squared is C squared. So it is of this form. And what we're going to use is some of the information we've already learned. One of the identities being that sine squared X plus cos squared X is equal to one. And we're going to use that in this proof. So I'm going to look at the left hand side first of all, which is 1 plus cot squared x. So if we use the identity that we've already got, which is that cot x is actually cos x over sin x. It's also could be written as 1 over tan x, but we're going to use the cos over sine. Then the left hand side of this will be. 1 plus cos x over sine x. Oops, sine x, and that's squared. So if you square both of these, then to square the numerator there, then we've got cos squared x. Remembering, by the way, the notation being that if we was to square cos x, well, then the standard notation for what that would mean is actually cos squared x with a 2 there. So that actually means the whole of cos x squared. So this would be cos squared x over sine squared x. And then if we try and um, work, work out, we've got to add these two together. Well, the one is actually just could be written as 1 over 1 as a fraction. And then we need a common denominator, which would be sine squared. So I'd have to multiply top and bottom of the 1 over 1 by sine squared. So I'd get sine squared x over sine squared x for the 1. And then that would be plus the cos squared x over sine squared x that we've already got. Now we can add the, the uh, numerators because we've got the common denominator there. So we can say that's going to be sine squared x plus cos squared x all over sine squared x. But happily, what we've got is sine squared plus cos squared. We know from before that sine squared plus cos squared is equal to 1. So the top line there reduces to just being 1 over sine squared x. And if we like, we could write that as actually being um, all in a bracket 1 over sine x all squared because 1 squared is just 1. And that's handy because we know actually from the definition of cosec, cosec x is equal to 1 over sine x. So in fact, what we've got inside the bracket is cosec x. And because it's squared, we'd write the square there. So we've, we've done it, we've proved it. And we could have just made the jump um, from from there straight to there, that would have been fine. I'm just trying to put an extra step in just to make it a bit more understandable. So that's the first one, example 39. If we now turn our attention to B, we've got a similar one. Again, this is in the same format, which is um, A squared, which is 1 squared is 1, plus B squared, tan squared, and c squared sec squared so that's why it's a pythagorean identity and 
We're going to start again by looking at just the left hand side of this and trying to turn it into the right hand side. So treating it as though it's actually one of these triple equal things. So the standard approach for this really is to break down everything in terms of just sine and cos. So I'm going to take the tan squared and I'm going to say, well, it's then the tan squared is actually sine squared x over cos squared x. And because I want to add the 1 to this fraction, I need to write the 1 with a denominator of cos squared x. So I'm going to have to times the top as well by cos squared x. So that could be written as being cos squared x over cos squared x for the 1, which, um, so plus the sine squared x over cos squared x. And if we have the top lines there, we've got cos squared x plus sine squared x all over cos squared x. And obviously that, even though it's written in a different order, it's still equal to one, the top line here. So that's gonna be one over cos squared x. And because we know that sec x is actually one over cos x, because that's the definition of it, then one over cos squared x is actually sec squared x. And we've done it. So these are really important identities to remember as well. So not just um, the proof, well, they'll be able to prove them as well, but also it's very important to remember these identities because they, they do come up quite a lot.